Fire Emblem. A series I didn't really like at first. But after I beat Fire Emblem Awakening for the 3DS, I played the other games and now I think these games are masterpieces. They have fantastic stories, beautiful characters and really fun gameplay. So of course I hope I could find some games like it on PC and I found 10 of them. These games are really fun and different in a good way. This is 10 great games like Fire Emblem. Let's start with number 1. Chroma Squad. You run your own Super Sentai studio, which involves the management stuff, hire actors, boy slash crap equipment, upgrade studio, take care of your fan base, hire marketing agencies, and of course, there's also giant mech battles just like in the Power Rangers shows. A game with fantastic retro soundtrack, fully customizable one-liners, beautiful graphics, the very best 2D pixel art style, humor everywhere, a lot of hidden references, great squad customization, you assign actors to squads, rules, and you can choose their color, name, skin, equips, and weapon. You can also choose the name of the squad, the name of the matcha, the catching phrase. But the premise of the game, which is that you are not just trying to defeat the enemies, but defeat the enemies in ways that increases views for your show. But at worst, the scenarios get kinda semi. The matcha battles are more luck based than anything. Scout class needs work in terms of rule within the team and the main base and humor might get under some delicate skins, but never mind the details. Overall, a blast for anyone, 15 hours of gameplay, lots of content, and completely worth the price, just great. Number 2 Fell Seal, Arbiter's Mark. This game is a big love letter to Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogre. The story is not the best thing in the world and at first I thought the graphics looked like a flash game. But when I actually started playing the game, I felt how much fun that was in it and a lot of entertaining strategy. The job system is back and it's bigger. Your non-story recruited characters will have access to 26 classes and each story character gets one special class plus 20 of those 26. The other 6 are reserved for non-story characters and can be unlocked with the use of a consumable item after meeting the level requirements. There is also a character who has access to the monster classes in the game and can master its own 90 jobs for that system. No random encounters, instead you can choose when to participate in a random battle for when you want to level grind. Plus, skippable cutscenes. Instead of JP, this game has AP for accruing the ability to learn skills in a class. When a character does an action, they gain AP for themselves and for the entire party in what's called a shared learning bonus applied at the end of every battle. Your entire party has one set pool for this shared AP and upon unlocking a class, every character will gain the AP in that class shared pool. By the end of the game, you could have a character master a class simply by unlocking it with enough shared AP build up over a lot of time. All characters will also gain a small amount of AP for whatever class they are in after a battle completes, whether they were deployed or not. Speaking of items, that whole system has been changed. No longer will you be buying and restocking potions at Phoenix Downs. This game has you craft your items and makes them available to your entire party in a limited but shared pool that is refilled for every battle. And your enemies will have their own item pool. You gain components for crafting upgrades to your item stock and potency over the course of the game and eventually you also get access to a class that can use items to greater effect. There's even more in the game, but I think I have said enough. Just give this game a try. It's one incredible indie game.
Number three. This gear five. This game has great strategy, crazy humor, and beautiful 2D graphics. Just how I like it. The story is really weird, and all the characters are pretty crazy. But they have to stick together to protect the universe. And in this version, you will get a lot of DLC content just when you buy the game. But be aware, many of the DLC characters are really overpowered. So you shouldn't use them at the start of the game if you want any kind of challenge. There are some panels which are stat or condition modifiers on certain colored titles on a map that either negatively or positively affect you and the enemy troops. They are all pretty dangerous, but you can use them on your enemy if you use some good thinking. The real reason to play this gear is the depth. Beating the story is only a tiny drop in the bucket of what you can do afterwards. Leveling up characters to level 9999 sounds like a crazy thing to do, right? What if you could continually reincarnate those characters into different classes to learn new abilities and do it all over again? That's what this gear is. That's the fun of it. If you're into seeing numbers continually go up, it can seem intimidating, but Dip your toes into it carefully, and there's an absolutely astounding amount of gameplay to be found here. So, if you're interested in quirky JRPGs that actually offer up stellar gameplay, this is definitely worth a look. It'll last you a long, long time. Number 4 Dark Deity. This is definitely not a game for everyone. Some of the maps are not the best and the story is just okay. But the class system is very customizable with many combos and synergies with personal skills and varying playstyles. If you like Fire Emblem or want to get into it, this is a decent starting point with three difficulty options. In terms of weapons, magic, healing, it's all unlimited use. You upgrade weapons, magic between maps with tokens which you get from enemies and you can buy them in the shop. You do have to make unit choices here as you can't reasonably keep everyone on pair in upgrades. There is no gold farming and higher tier tokens just can't be bought for everybody. Personally, I really like this system. It's a nice way to do weapons I think. Speaking of weapons, everybody has four. One for raw attack power, one for crit and less power. One for accuracy and less power, crit and one that seemingly applies a small amount of each. They each have different weights as well which affect your speed for doubling. My consensus is if you like Fire Emblem, give it a try. Maybe it's too crusty for you or maybe you just don't like it, that's fine. Live your best life. Number 5 Valkyria Chronicles 4 Complete Edition this game is for those who do not know where to start with the series. Because VC4 is easily the most accessible and beginner friendly game in the series, while still offering a decent amount of challenge. This game has excellent fun gameplay formula, perfectly blending third person shooter and turn based RPG. Plenty of items, weapons, characters, secret missions and other content to unlock. Detailed team management mechanics, also considering relationships between squad members. As for the story, it's once more an exciting journey full of memorable characters. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll be surprised at how even though they are doing EW22 for the third time, they still manage to tell one hell of a grand story. Unlike Mercurial Chronicles 1, the side characters actually get to be in the spotlight in their own little missions. Another welcome comeback from Mercurial Chronicles 2 and 3. Humanity go to win any war we are exploring with much deeper in this time around. Even through, Mercurial Chronicles 4 has the most lighthearted start in the series. It slowly turns into the darkest, most depressing entry of all four games. At the end of the day, this puts some small shortcomings. But Curry Chronicles 4 is an outstanding game, well worth anyone's time. Even if you are a battle-hearted and serious veteran, or just a new recruit, give Curry Chronicles 4 a shot and I'm certain you won't be disappointed. 
Highly recommend. Number six. Into the Breach. Into the Breach is a game where you try to save the world from wicked insects with three mechs at your command. There are a total of 24 different kinds of mechs available to play once you have unlocked them all. You unlock mechs by doing Steam achievements and this is a clever move by developers. You should think achievements as quests in this game and those quests usually give some hints how to use a particular mech efficiently. Every single mech have different abilities and playing style varies greatly between mech squads. The game world is divided to four different islands which are all infested by wick creatures. All the islands have different ecosystems, equests, enemies and hazards to deal with. They all feel unique and you have to alert your strategies a bit between islands to survive. But sadly, you have to clear two, three or all four islands from Vax in order to start the final battle. I have to admit, the final battle is my biggest disappointment in this game. I don't want to spot anything, so I just say, it doesn't feel any epic at all. The basic gameplay is simple. Use your three mechs with best of your abilities to complete island sections. A mission slash level slash goals. There are usually one to three goals per mission and not everyone is about killing enemies or protecting buildings. There are some great variety about mission goals but they are island oriented and you repeat same goals many times during playthroughs. Island section is always sized 8x8 eight eight square like on a chess board and like on chess game. Your mind is the ultimate weapon in this game. Even if island settings feels pretty known after a few games, every game still feels fresh and fun because there are so many different mechs with all the different ways you can handle the levels. This game makes you feel like an absolute genius and a total idiot at the same time. Just an incredible indie game. Number 7 XCOM Enemy Unknown I have always been a big fan of the XCOM franchise since the very first game all those years ago. And I have to say that XCOM Enemy Unknown is a worthy reboot of the series. The game is an odd mix of strategic base building slash management and turn based tactical combat. You will research new weapons, armor and even technologies such as genetic engineering and mech warrior, half man half machine, although more like 5% man, 95% machine. You will have to capture and interrogate the aliens perform autopsies and try to understand why the aliens are here and how you can stop them. The visuals are great, although they are a little over the top. You can feel warriors clad in pink with bright blue, big hair, or you can choose dark, camouflaged, spec ops type soldiers. It is up to you and has no effect on the game other than to meet your own preferences. You can name your soldiers to make it more personal and more dramatic when they die. All around, this is a fun game and with DLC such as The Enemy Within and much such as Long War, this game has a lot of replay value and potentially could be something you sink hundreds of hours into. A very enjoyable game with engaging mechanics and a smart AI that makes for very emotional unscripted moments. Number 8 The Bana Saga the Banner Saga is a beautiful story-driven turn-based strategy game slash RPG lasting about 8 to 12 hours. Overall, I thought it was a great experience and its major strengths are its fantastic art reminiscent of classic Disney or Don Bluth animated films, good soundtrack and relatively challenging and compelling battles. My primary complaint with the game is that its story is told in a bit of an exhausting way with a ton of dialogue that's not easy to care about. And I was really ready for the game to end a few hours before it actually did. And I really feel like the experience didn't need to be as padded out with so many seemingly same eye towns and encounters. Still, The Banner Saga is a really ambitious title and one of the better strategy games I've played in recent memory and certainly the most visually striking. But in the end, this game has a mature story and consequences. An unforgettable game that is in a category of its own. Like it or hate it, you must try it out for yourself since there is nothing quite like it out there.
and still the best one of the three Saga games, if you ask me. Number 9 Shadowrun Dragonfall Director's Cut Tight, well written, engaging and oozing charm and flavor. Dragonfall is one of the best CRPGs out there, handbrained hits way above its weight class. Decent cyberpunk story fitted in the Shadowrun world as a sock fit to lick. Just as the dead man's switch, Dragonfall is much like a good book you will be enjoyed reading. More than just a story, this scenario based in the 2054 anarchic Berlin with brought from politics, corporations, dragons, losing AI, street gangs and syndicates. I cannot watch for the taste, but it will be hot. Get me right, it is not an animated story, it's a solid party RPG, one to be memorized after finishing and catching all the way through. Team based gameplay improved a lot after Deadman Switch as you get your own crew of anarchists. Your decisions will be questioned every now and then, and the more trust you gain, the more powerful your team will be. Compared to the first game, all the game aspects were noticeably improved, that includes visuals, audio, game mechanics and general logic. No one can calculate fun from the game, but my guess they improved that too. Overall, it's the best Shadowrun game on the PC at the moment, and one of the best cyberpunk games in existence. I guarantee you, you will have an epic adventure. And finally, we can't forget about number 10, Troubleshooter Abandoned Children. This is a tactical RPG at its core. A bit of XCOM meets Final Fantasy tactic. With an anime like story, huge amounts of content, hundreds of hours worth, and one of the most extensive character customization system I have seen in years. Nice art and music, plus amazing characters. But here's a quick rundown of the features. Nine recruitable characters, each with their own personality, skills and playstyle. Big classes for each character, base class plus two advanced classes. Each plays differently and comes with a unique set of abilities. Beast taming slash drone building. Satisfying and can be leveled and customized just like characters. Mastery system is highly flexible and allows you to build a character for any play style or role. Crafting system is deeply integrated into the game and pretty extensive. AI doesn't cheat and instead uses the same underlying systems as your own characters, skills, masteries, leveling, etc. This makes them challenging but fair. You can replay any mission and pick different choices. Story. The presentation is a bit like an anime, but it doesn't detract from the overall enjoyment. There is quite a bit of dialogue, and some missions offer choices, though consequences are usually restricted to that particular mission. If you want to get into the crafting system, taming, getting rare masteries, epics, legendary gear and other endgame activities, then expect much more, plus multiplayer, so yeah. Overall, those are small defects that can be expected by an enthusiastic independent dev team and they are largely made up by the amount of labor and love that has been obviously put into the game. So, it is a big yes for me. Ever since I played Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones on my Game Boy Advance, it was always interesting to find more of these games and experience the amazing stories they have and it feels like Nintendo's official Final Fantasy games or something. It looks like they really like Atlas games, because Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valencia and Fire Emblem Three Houses are really inspired by Persona 5. If you know any other cool games like Fire Emblem, please let me know. But anyway, what is your favorite Fire Emblem game? Do you like the new games or do you prefer the old ones? Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like. If you want to see our future updates on the channel, please click the subscribe button and click that notification bell. I'm Riyad, and as always, I will see you next time right here on Omega's Movie.